In this video, we're going to set up an Apollo to work with Apple's Logic Pro X on a Mac. We're using an Apollo Twin for most of the examples, but the concepts here apply to all Thunderbolt Apollos. If you haven't done so, please install the UAD software before watching so you can follow along. The Apollo workflow gives you a near-zero latency audio environment by providing input monitoring for all live audio through the Apollo interface, essentially replacing Logic's software monitor function. This eliminates the latency caused by the round trip from the interface to the computer and back again. The direct connection to your audio lets you hear, and more importantly, feel your live performance, complete with incredible real-time UAD processing. You can record and monitor through vintage compressors, reverbs, preamp models, or guitar amp emulations with no latency, just like a classic analog studio. Playback from Logic or other DAWs is merged with live sound in the Apollo, so your audio is always in sync and host computer latency is completely avoided. Apollo's console application is the key to unlocking Apollo's unique real-time UAD processing capabilities. It emulates the workflow of a hardware console and allows you to monitor your audio, patch in effects, and create headphone mixes, all within Apollo's DSP. All inputs are shown as channel strips that are routed directly to the monitor output, so you always hear sound, unless the channel's fader is pulled down or the channel is muted. The console's faders, mute, solo, and pan only affect what you hear in the speakers and do not affect the audio recorded in Logic. Audio sent to Logic originates either pre-insert or post-insert, depending on the position of the insert effect switch on the channel. When set to record, channel inserts are committed and recorded in Logic. When set to monitor, channel inserts are heard in the monitors but not printed. Channels can be set individually or console-wide using the global record and monitor buttons. Unison preamp emulations are always printed as they're attached to Apollo's physical preamps. Now let's take a look at the Apollo console settings. Click on the icon in the dock to open the console application. Start by clicking the Settings button to access the Interface Settings window. In the Hardware panel, you can set the sample rate, clock source, monitor operating level, input delay compensation, and alt speaker count. Rack mount Apollos include digital mirroring, Q-Bus, and the function switch assign. Second generation Apollos allow you to disable monitor gain so you can use the monitor output with an external monitor controller. Note that when this is bypassed, the alt speaker and function control switch operations are removed. You can also bypass the line input gain cell for the purest path to the A to D converters. The core audio panel gives you access to Apollo's unique flex driver capabilities that let you configure the inputs and outputs that are sent to core audio. The display panel lets you set console metering, clip hold, peak hold, plugins always on top, device names, and the timeouts for modifiers. The plugins panel gives you access to the control mode for how plugins respond to mouse movement in the console. You also see the complete list of UAD plugins in your system with their authorization status and show hide status for the lists within the Apollo console. Lastly, the MIDI panel lets you set an input device, channel, and note for the tap tempo function. To get started, let's go back to the hardware panel. The default settings are a good starting point and they can be changed at any time. However, you may want to turn off input delay compensation. Input delay compensation is used to time align multi mic applications like drums when you have different plugins on the channels. Most of the time, it can be turned off to reduce latency and DSP consumption. Core Audio is the digital audio infrastructure of iOS and OS X. It allows you to route sounds and MIDI between applications and hardware. Computer system sounds, browsers, iTunes, and DAWs like Logic all use Core Audio, and you can use the Audio MIDI setup utility to set up and manage it. Apollo's unique flex driver functionality lets you select which of Apollo's inputs and outputs you want to use with Core Audio applications like Logic and the order in which they appear. With Apollo's flex driver, you're free to use the inputs and outputs you want and skip the ones you don't. The Core Audio panel is where you manage Apollo's Core Audio driver. Mode lets you choose between custom or default. Click default to see all of the available inputs and outputs in your system. As soon as you make a change to an input or output, it changes to custom. The I.O. Presets button lets you save custom presets for easy recall. This is great if you're working with different DAWs or configurations and want to switch quickly. The Number of Inputs and Outputs buttons lets you set the number of streams you're sending to Core Audio. 
Lastly, the Edit button lets you cascade, so you can click and drag down to select consecutive choices when you're building your lists. Let's start with a simple setup with an Apollo Twin. With Apollo Twin, the number of inputs is determined by the digital input mode. ADAT mode provides 20 inputs, while SPEEDIF mode provides 14 inputs. Rack mount Apollos have dedicated digital ports, so they have a fixed set of I.O. To make sure all of the I.O. is present, click Default on the Mode button. You'll now see all of the available I.O. in the twin, and it's all you need to get sound in and out of Logic. Now launch Logic, and after the audio unit scan is complete, we need to load the Apollo driver. Open the Audio Preferences window, and in the Devices tab, select Universal Audio Apollo for both input and output device, and click Apply Changes. In Audio Preferences, we'll also set the I.O. buffer size. With Apollo, DAW buffer size doesn't really matter because Apollo handles the audio input and monitoring with dedicated DSPs in the interface, so your latency is fixed at 1.1 milliseconds at 96K. That means you can get your sound dialed in with EQ, compression, or any other UAD plugins. You're free to set up reverbs and effects all in real time without compromising your computer's processing power or suffering the annoying latency common with other interfaces. If you run native effects or play virtual instruments inside Logic, set the hardware buffer to a low setting like 64 or 32 samples. Low buffers use more of the computer's power for playback, so fewer tracks and native processes are possible, but latency is minimized and instruments are much easier to play. For mixing, you can set the I.O. buffer high so that the computer has more horsepower to dedicate to the mixing engine. You'll have to experiment to find the best settings for your computer. A good I.O. buffer size to start with is 128 samples. Logic also has a separate buffer for plug-in processing called Processor Buffer Range, which also affects latency. For mixing, you can set it to medium or large. For the lowest latency with plugins running inside Logic, use the small setting, but be aware that it uses more processing power. In Logic, inputs and outputs are shown as numbered lists by default, but it's really easy to incorporate the names provided by Apollo's driver. Just go to the Mix menu and choose I.O. Labels. Click on the Provided by Driver radio button for the first input, then scroll down to the last output and shift-click on its radio button to change all of them at once. Now you'll see the names of the inputs and outputs alongside the number, which is really helpful. You can also customize the names of inputs and outputs by entering the long and short names and selecting the User radio button for those channels. Logic automatically renames Apollo's main monitor left-right outputs to Stereo Output and automatically sets it to the user name selection. New tracks are set to stereo out by default, but you can easily bust the signal to any of Apollo's outputs, including the headphone outputs. Logic Pro has a built-in input monitoring option to accommodate different types of I.O. and workflows. When using input monitoring in Logic with Apollo, you may hear an unwanted doubling sound. This results from hearing Apollo's low latency path combined with audio through logic, which is subject to latency. You can avoid input latency altogether by turning off software monitoring and listening to your live audio directly through the Apollo console. To disable software monitoring, go to Preferences and open the General tab and uncheck Software Monitoring. Logic also features low latency mode, which disables certain plugins during recording. You can set a limit for how much latency a plugin can have before being disabled as well. Logic automatically sends the session sample rate to Apollo's internal clock, so you can switch between sessions with different sample rates without needing to restart or change any settings on Apollo. If you use an external clock, set the source and hardware settings and keep in mind that you need to manually set the external clock to match your session sample rate. Virtual channels let you route audio from various applications to channel strips in the console. It can be really useful to route Logic's main output to a pair of virtual channels instead of the default main monitor. This lets you use a fader to control Logic's output and makes it easier to blend live sources with DAW playback right in the console. In Audio Preferences, go to the I.O. Assignments tab and map the stereo output of Mon left and right to Virtual 1 and 2. In the console, you can link Virtual 1 and 2 to create a stereo fader and give it a custom name. You may also want to route your computer audio through virtual channels so you can have it on a channel strip and experiment with plugins. 
To do so, launch the Audio MIDI Setup application and view the Audio Devices window. Click on Output and resize the left column to expose the channel names. With unmodified settings, you'll see virtual channels 1 through 4 are streams 5 through 8 on the Apollo Twin. Now click Configure Speakers and set the left and right speakers to the virtual channels you want to use. For example, to use virtual 1 and 2 on Apollo Twin, select streams 5 and 6. Then click Apply and Done to commit the changes. Your computer audio now plays through virtual 1 and 2, and you can use plugins to make it sound great. Rack mount Apollos feature 8 virtual channels, and they correspond to streams 21 through 28 in Audio MIDI 7. There are several ways to set up your headphone mixes in Apollo. The simplest is to set the Q output source to monitor. Everything you hear in the speakers is routed to the headphone output. Input levels are mixed on console channel faders, and DAW playback levels are set in Logic. And you control the overall volume with the headphone controls on the front panel of your Apollo. Another simple method comes for free when you route Logic's output to virtual channels. In addition to controlling Logic's volume level with a fader for your monitor mix, you also get a send you can use to create a separate blend of live inputs and DAW for the headphones. You can set the Q source to monitor and use the main mix, or set it to a Q and create a separate mix with the sends. You can also create completely discrete headphone mixes using a combination of console cues and Logic sends. In Logic, create a new aux channel strip to use as a return. Set the input to a bus and set the output to a headphone output. Now, sends from Logic and Apollo Q sends both go to the headphone outputs. The console recall plugin is used to keep the Apollo console's routing and processing synced up to your DAW session. Console recall takes a snapshot of the entire console and stores all settings every time you hit save in Logic. Simply insert the console recall plugin on a track in Logic and click the sync button to enable automatic saving. In addition to providing direct access to Apollo's monitor control from Logic, it ensures that when you open a session months or years from now, the tracking front end will be exactly the same as it was the last time you opened a session. Of course, Apollo's DSP resources can be applied where you need them. You can track with real-time UAD processing in the console, and you can also use UAD plugins for mixing in Logic. So whether you're tracking, mixing, or mastering, Apollo provides the sound quality, low latency performance, and power for all phases of audio production. You'll find more information and current software at help.uaudio.com.